Hey YouTube, this is Thinking of Pi. Today I'll be showing you how to use an ultrasonic rangefinder with your Raspberry Pi. These things are pretty easy to use and pretty simple to set up, but I do want to talk a little bit about how they work. The rangefinder emits a ultrasonic high-pitched sound wave that bounces off of a target, comes back to the rangefinder, then we just do the math to calculate the distance. Like I said, it's pretty easy, but I do want to show you the, the rangefinder, so let's take a look at that, and then I'll show you the code on the computer. So this is really all there is to it. We've got our rangefinder right here, and then there's just four wires. We've got the ground, the voltage, and our two signal wires. Let me just pull this out of here so it's a little bit easier to see. We've got the transmit side right here. This is the one that emits the, the sound wave. And this is the receive side. You got the R right there and the T right there. And then our pins are defined right here. You can see the voltage, the trigger, the echo, and the ground. It's got its own deal on the back here. Um, it's got its own little microcontroller too. So all we've got to do is read the signal on both of the pins. So that's all there is to it. Let's head over to the computer and I'll show you how it works. All right, we've got our code here already put together. Not a lot to this, but we've got um, our GPIOs, we've got our time function, and then we've got our um, trigger and echo pins defined here. We do have to define the maximum distance so that we can try to work around any errors that we might get. The rangefinder does have a maximum distance of about 220 centimeters. Um, the pulse in function right here, I'll talk about that in a second. It's more relevant when I get down here. Um, so this is what really does the work. Um, we're just going to set the trigger pin to high, and it'll send out a 10 microsecond long signal. And then we'll turn the trigger pin off. And then we're going to use ping time here. That is the function up here where it's going to actually calculate the time that it took for that signal to leave and come back. And then all we have to do is calculate the distance. We got our ping time multiplied by 340, which is the speed of sound, 340 meters per second at sea level. I'm a little bit above sea level, but it's not going to make too much of a difference. Divide that by two because you've got the distance going two ways, there and back. So Divide that in half and then divide it by 10,000 because it was only a 10 microsecond signal. And then it returns the distance. So then all we have to do is run a loop here saying to set a variable as distance to the get sonar function. And then we print it. The distance is x number of centimeters. And it's going to be repeating that action every second. So let's go ahead and run this and see how it goes. There we go. Just bouncing off the wall right now. About 125 centimeters. But when I put my hand in front of it here, you can see that I'm about 10 centimeters away from it. Get closer. I don't know what the minimum is on this. Let's find out. Oh, it's working pretty good. Oh, that's definitely not right. There we go, about three centimeters. Yeah, not bad. That's all there is to it, though. Like I said, it's very simple. Something like this um, I see used a lot in robotics so that it knows if it's getting close to some kind of obstacle and what kind of changes it needs to make. They can also be used to measure the speed of sound. Um, right now, we know the speed of sound, and we know um, the time that it takes to get from point A to point B. But if we didn't know the speed of sound, we could set it up with a fixed distance and then just calculate um, time it takes and calculate the the speed of the sound from there. That's pretty simple, but I'm not doing that today. I do intend to do something similar with my weather balloon project, but
but this rangefinder does not work at extremely cold temperatures. So I'm looking for a different one for that, for that experiment. I'll keep you guys updated on that. Um, next week is actually going to be the last video in the beginner series. I'll be showing you how to use a simple accelerometer directly with the Raspberry Pi. So make sure you subscribe and don't miss out on that. And then the following week, I will be starting the a series. I'll be starting a series on the Bloom project. I'll be taking you through every step of how to do that. So again, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any of it. It's going to be great. And I will talk to you all guys. I'll talk to you all next week. Thanks.